Welcome everybody. We are in the Mr. Sashaim. If you've got this book, uh, it's every Mr. Sashaim is the same, pretty much. This is the Feldheim edition. On this one, we're on page 161, nearing the end of another humility. We're like, just got a few more paragraphs to go. Oh my goodness. Very good. Okay, so we're at the top of the page. Any questions? And we're good? Okay. For Aunt Shaninu. So now we're going to talk about the three men, how they relate to this idea. We talked about it. We didn't meet last week, sorry, because I was ill. But uh, the week before, how each, we were talking about the fourth component of another is giving covered to everybody else. Um, where does it start here? Pelagrophy, right? It's the bottom of page 160, right? To give cover to everybody else. So we said that doesn't mean praise people just for the sake of praising people. It means to see other people as important. It's a very important, it's a very important idea. That it's not like just heap onto them, just like, oh, you, you know, you're such a fantastic person. But just false praise or random praise but it's to see other people as, as important in their own right because god made them so they have to so exactly that's where their that's where their worth comes from oh very good so that's the <laughs> is it, you now that's the first man but archinino and we both further us and now we're talking about the three men how they relate to this idea have magdim b'shalom kol adam that you should um magdim uh, he says be for the first you should always preempt uh be eag- uh, early initiate initiate maybe uh, that's a, i like that translate initiate yeah initiate um i like that word which word are you looking magdim. at magdim it means to be hard Ma- to be going front so but how does that work here have magdim b'shalom kol adam. You should, you should. Oh, Billy, Billy's joining us. We've yeah. All star crew, uh, crew tonight. Shout all star shout. Right. Have magdim shalom the kol adam. You, you should, you should be, uh, uh, be pleasant. Literally greet with peace. Everybody else. The Amru Alav 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 Yochanan Ben Zachar. Rabbi, about this, Rabbi Yochanan Ben Zachar said, "Shalom Hidim Lo Adam Shalom Mo Olam." A feel of goy b'shok. Rabbi Yochanan said, he said about him that he ne- nobody ever was able to beat him. Was never, never. Pre- um, how does he translate that? Uh, preceded him in a greeting. And that was he was the first person, he was so eager to greet people that no one ever beat him. Even a goy, even a non-Jew in the in the marketplace. Meaning somebody who's like of uh uh uh, uh, uh what's the word? English isn't my first language of um of uh questionable repute, right? Nevertheless, no one ever beat him to greeting him in the market. Like he was the first person to be excited to see him. And when you when you greet people, with, hello, how are you? So there's no difference. Hello, how are you? Right? There's hello, how are you? Right? And then there's you know, oh, you're the president of the United States. Hello, how are you? You're, you're the person who's uh, who's uh, you know. Uh, found a cure for cancer. Hello, how are you? There's the richest man in the world. Hello, how are you? Right? There's the, the, the wisest person in the world. Hello, how are you? Right? So if you if you view somebody as valuable, then hello, how are you? Is that, is that different? Hello, how are you? Uh, we talked about. Did we do this last time about King Solomon, uh, King David, the argument between King David and um, and Carl Sagan? Did we do this? Uh, I get in late to your classes, so yeah, I may famous, have missed it. There's a famous argument between Carl Sagan and David and Malik. You know the argument? You've heard it, right? I've, I have not. 
So you see, there's a famous argument between Carl Sagan and David Mellick. So they asked Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan was a famous astrophysicist, died about, I think, about 10 years ago. Jewish guy, big atheist. And, um, and he kept positing throughout his career that there was extraterrestrial life somewhere. There had to be life on another planet somewhere. So they asked him, like, why are you so... If you've seen the movie Contact, it's based on... It, it's, there's a line in there. They say it's, the whole movie is based on his philosophy or theory. That um, they ask him, they, how are you so convinced? He had this line. How are you so convinced that there's life at, uh, in, on another planet? And he said, if there isn't life on another planet, what a waste of space. In other words, <laughs> the universe is so big, right? The, the, the fact that I think since he died, I think they found it's bigger by 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 a big measure because they realized that I don't know how they came to this conclusion, but nevertheless, scientists say that the universe is expanding at the speed of light. I, I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> I've, I've heard that. Yeah, right. which completely has has you know. Uh, um, I don't know what I, I'm struggling with my language today. Completely gutted the scientific, the sci, science fiction world. Because the whole thing is like, you know, you can't, you, the whole thing is a go find, you know, go to explore where, where men have never gone before, right? That's the Star Trek mission. And they now realize, like, you'll never get there. There's not, it's so far away and it's growing so fast. You could never get there. You're never going to be able to get anywhere close to the edge of the universe. It's impossible, right? It's expanding so fast. So that's a, that's a killer. What, what, a, what a disappointing motivation. It just destroys your motivation. So, but his point was, if, if we're all there is, what a waste of space, right? You understand? So they asked David and Melech the same question. So David and Melech said a fascinating thing. He says, I wouldn't think, Ma enosh adam I wouldn't think that a human being is such an important thing, right? So how do I know how important he is? When I look up to the stars, right, I now realize how mindful what you think of us, right? What was he saying? So you see, right, you see, when I go to get my wife, it's my wife's birthday, right? When I go to get her a present, right, I go down to the dollar store. Sometimes if I'm feeling good, it's five and below. You're still alive? What's that? I it's said, a... and you're still alive? I mean, I'm locked away. And... They're downsizing now, don't forget. Right, so, you see, but when, but when Yechiel goes to get his wife a present, like, what does he do? Right? He calls up He to... got me this hat. Right? It's he very lovely. <laughs> It's very lovely. No, 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 no. It's a lovely When you hear that, he calls up he calls up Tiffany's, right? And he says, you know, give me your best shot. Right? It's my wife's birthday, right? So you give me your best shot. So what do they do? They uh they they, they on the day, on the on the wonderful day, they call up they, they send it they're one of their purple turquoise trucks, right? And um and uh, the big truck pulls up outside your house. The guy gets out of this truck, opens up the back, and all that's in there is one single solitary box, right? The guy gets out, pulls out the box, and hands it to your wife, right? She's standing there with all of her friends. She opens the box, and and uh, in there's another box. There's all this fluffy stuff. There's another box. She takes out that box, right? And inside there's another little box. She takes out that box. Inside that is a little carton, a little fluffy thing. Undoes that, there's all silk and everything. She finally unwraps that, and there's a plastic cover. And she takes that off and put right below, and he holds up right, a, ba a bracelet. And her friend's standing there, who's not the sharpest tool in the shed. And she says to your wife, right, right, what a waste of space, that whole truck for this <laughs> bracelet, right? And your wife, being the smart cookie she is, she says, No, you fool. She doesn't say it like that. I'm, I'm editing, right? She says, No, you fool, right? This is the the, the 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 truck tells me, the space tells me how much my husband loves me. The bigger the truck, the more valuable the bracelet is. You, you understand? So you see, Carl Sagan, he didn't think human beings were that valuable. So then what do you want such a truck for? Dovin and Melek said the same thing. I wouldn't think a human being is so valuable. 
but when I see the space that a human being, the packaging, that every human being comes with its own packaging. What's the packaging? The universe. Now, any idiot has to ask the question, what do you need such a big universe for? Like, like are you starting to feel crowd cramped? You know, I need another infinite space to like build out. Why do we need such a big universe? Why do we need a universe that's expanding at the speed of light? Why do we need such a thing? So it's coming to tell you how valuable, this is the packaging. The Almighty is sending us a very important message. It's the same thing we do with our children. Okay? We tell our children they're important to us. How do you get that message across? Okay? But what you do, if they're really important to you, right, when they come in, you turn off the, you know, the Simpsons. Or you, uh, whatever else you're engaged in, right? When they call, you pick you put up down the phone. You put down the phone, exactly. It's by our actions, they can say, you're important. Just saying it is 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 not is not sufficient. The same thing how we talk about anybody, right? So how valuable is another human being? Right? Is that if this person was a gift, you know, there's, a, there's a famous saying it's, I talked about last time. But it, 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 we don't know who said it. It's anonymous. But the day you were born is the day God decided the world cannot go on without you. Right? But really, it's more than but you said it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm quoting. I found it. It's not that I didn't. I didn't create the idea. I didn't come up with it. It's a lovely idea. But really, it's more about. It's more. This concept is bigger than that. It's not that you were important. We're going to get to this idea. It's not that you were important. The world needs you to function. It's that your intrinsic value is infinite. It is impossible. It's not infinite. So it's not infinite. The universe isn't infinite. But it's it, it's. If the if the Almighty could create an infinite universe, then maybe he would. It could be your value is infinite, but he can't create an infinite universe. What he can create is the next best thing, a universe that's expanding at the speed of infinite. Is that, oh, it's not infinite, not the span, but the fastest thing you can go. It's expanding, expanding at the highest rate it can possibly expand. In other words, God's expressing as best he can in, the, in, in, the, in, in a message of the physical universe how valuable you are, right? Now, if you believe that, right? If you believe that, what, how would you be talking to the guy next to you? When you see a new person, how would you, right? You understand? They don't think that's an irrelevant idea because if you believed it you and you acted on it, it would, it would raise your own personal self-confidence, right? You understand? Just thinking, right, that, that, that is so unfortunate what education, so the so-called education um, does, for, does for children because they're all about, you know, making you unique and making you important and giving you value, right? But the way to experience your own personal value, to feel good about yourself, self-confidence, is through this technique. If you experience... Is this making sense? And unfortunately, schools and the modern system of education and Hollywood doesn't help either, right? Size is, you know, you can be all you can be and all that silliness, right? Which just, which just erodes a person's self-confidence. But if you truly appreciate that, that, that every single person you meet is, 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 is ultimate value, well, I'm a person too. It would rub off on you. So if we had that kind of thinking, there would be no such thing as sports. There would be no such thing as ridiculous movies. There would be so many things that would not exist that currently exist today, but that are also diminishing, by the way. That's true. That's true. That's true. Right. Very good. I think it's diminishing because uh, the world's, you know, thank, thanks to the Jews, is becoming more sane. We're, <laughs> We're, we're teaching the world the, the value of a human being. Now, it's a very roundabout way, but um, um, it's going away from the composite, the concept of competition. You have to beat other people. You know, sports is just the law. It's just barbarianism, barbarianism civilized barbarianism. It's but, not very civilized. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Right? But, that, but that's what it is, right? You put the, it's the gladiators. You put two, two people in the, and, right, and, they, and, they, and you know, only one of them walks out. 
right? So we don't we don't go to that level anymore, right? But that's what boxing is. Boxing has lost a lot of its luster because it's again human beings have, have appreciated more the value of a human being. It's not about beating other people, but it's a reflection of everything. It's reflecting in everything. So that's the first man. Everybody has value. So what's the second man? Whether it's in speech or whether it's in action, a person is obligated to, to have covered for an honor for his friend. It's 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva that died. Because they did not show covered to each other, right? Now, this is a very difficult thing to understand, right? Any stretch yeah, of the like that. What? Keep going, because I, I would like to talk a little more about this. Go on, I want to hear. Yeah, so this is very hard, difficult to understand. These are the students, the 24,000 students of, when they died, the Talmud says the whole Jewish people were gutted. It was like darkness fell. It's like, you know, think about October 7th, but a thousand times worse, right? October 7th, you know, you know, you probably don't know anyone personally who died in October 7th, right? But if you did, right, it'd be far more impactful. 24,000 students died in Israel. Everybody knew somebody. And, and not only did they know somebody, these were like, when you see these videos come out, of some of the people who died and you hear their stories of how wonderful people they are right i mean it's it's heartbreaking right well these twenty four thousand were the were the elite of the jewish people every town every family had somebody there were, whether it was a brother husband cousin they absolutely devastated mind-boggling so how can you say i mean how can you say they didn't have covered for each other? Like, what kind of people were they? You, you understand? Now, now, these are gadolim. These are not like, you know, like, you know, I don't know, you, you know, average New York Times reporter. These were great people. That Larry likes that joke. Yeah. Like, these were great people. So, like, you know, you don't think they got the message? I mean, after one week, you know, we just saw October 7th, 1,700 people died, were massacred, right? I mean, after a hundred of these, these, these students died, you don't think they woke up? You don't think they got the message? They don't think they're like, oh my goodness, what are we doing? They didn't have, they didn't have a cause. Didn't, didn't, didn't they die though, like, like after, in, within a couple of weeks? I, uh... Yeah, three, three weeks. In three weeks, I mean... Right. So after the first week, you don't think they go, my goodness, what's going on here? Wouldn't they have been so overwhelmed that they, they would still be sort of in shock? I mean, these are great people. About when, again, we're not talking about your average CNN reporter here, right? I know, but like after October 7th, oh, we were like all in shock. We were like... Exactly. Like, if, most of us couldn't like manage. Well, I don't know if we could manage. No, we were like... It was oh, very was difficult to, to grasp the enormity yeah. and barbarity. Right, but, 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 we, yeah. but we didn't stop, like, ask ourselves, you know, everybody's, a, what's the, what are we supposed to do with this? I mean, Israel immediately realized what they, the, the leadership realized what they have to do. I mean, it, it was, it was uh, they got the message right away, you know? I mean, but, but, how okay, did they not get it? So we're well, actually not talking about covered like we've been talking about. We're talking about a different kind of covered, a different kind of honor. What's the honor that we're talking about? Like the honor of that concept. The day you were born is the day that God decided the world cannot go on without you. It's not a generic, every human being has in infinite value, right? It's, it's like you're on the, it's, not, it's like you're, you're on Apollo 13. And everyone there is necessary to bring us back alive. Everybody, every engineer who's in mission control is necessary to bring us back alive. This person 
is vital. This part is like being on a nuclear submarine. You can't just you can't just flush the guy through the torpedo tubes. And then what he's doing, he's necessary for the functioning of the of the submarine. And if he isn't there, you're not going to surface. You, you see the difference? That's a different kind of um, uh, importance to a person. Every Do you per- think the first guy is more like? a general intrinsic honor, whereas the second guy is, there's an individual um, reason as to why to have honor specifically for you. you. There's something special about you. That's right, right. And, and the world can't function without you. Um, everything, no matter what I do, no matter how valuable what I'm doing is, is important, if you're not there, nothing will work. Oh, this is like the example you give with the airplane <laughs> where you take everything apart and then you realize hey uh, there's one piece that I brought right, that's, that's missing right, that's right that's right exactly now we're not going to talk about Boeing <laughs> someone someone forgot a bolt there right so 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 that's the that's the second man everybody is valuable everybody has this has, has this is in the 24,000 students. 24,000 students, each one of them carried a concept to the to the future of the Jewish people that without them, it will not function. It, it, it's like, you know, again, it's like the International Space Station. This guy is the one who's, who's you know, running the guidance system. And like, yeah, yeah, this guy's, you know, the oxygen system, and this guy's got the lighting system, and this guy's got the... Uh, the thrust and this one's got the, you know, each one's got his role and only he knows what to, how to do it. So without him, we don't go anywhere, right? So your role is very, is vital, but his role is, 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 is just as vital. You know, there's 24,000 students. Well, they're vital in different, they're vital in different ways. Vital in different ways, right? That's a different kind of covered, you, you follow? Yeah. Now, if, if if you were if if you saw the people who you know in that way, in other words, this guy, you know, like you, you know, you know, God forbid, but you're in the ICU unit. This guy is helping you, you know, helping the person with the blood, and this guy's got the oxygen. It's like a surgery, right? How would you treat each person differently than you would by the first man? You would look and see what was unique about them. You would like, right. you would try about to see their, their specialness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And what right. else? You'd probably appreciate them more. That's true. You see, well, it's you, their needs. Their needs, right? It, it makes sure, you know, you got you the rents, you got the rents, right? How's that cold? You, you, better, you better wear a furry hat, you know? You can't go out with it. You understand? You're not going to let people play around vaccines, not vaccines. I don't know how how you hold it. Doesn't matter. But whatever you hold, you're gonna you make sure that everybody else holds the same way. No. Oh, is that why everybody's going crazy? Because What's we're that? getting that. Is that why everybody is going crazy nowadays? Like it's like so extreme people's reactions because we're coming into this type of consciousness. Maybe that's a good point. Could be. I don't know. Could be. Could be. That's very interesting, but but you said that's how the second man thinks. That we need you say you're needed. It's, it has to be that you think that you you say you have you have to be that you see. Everybody has a function that is necessary to make the world work. This again, I said this before. Why abortion is so dangerous? It's such a bad idea because this child was necessary for the functioning of the universe. It's not like so God's you know someone else can do that job. No, we needed this person. You know? There's a very different way of thinking about it. By the way, Israel does think more lo- along these lines. That's why universal he- free health care in Israel works more, far better than it does anywhere else in the world. Because Israelis look at each other like that. I would say, I would say absolutely, but they look that it's closer than anywhere else in the world. Because it, because it's absolutely true. Uh, and they and they got that message on October seventh. Everybody's needed, really. 
we need every single person we can get. They, they get that message very clearly. Right now, if you need this person, are you gonna like, you know, block the traffic? You're gonna insult him? You're gonna, could you leave him? You don't want him to leave the country. You see, that's the second man. Also, if you're thinking in this way, you don't bother with silly things that's at all. Absolutely, absolutely. That's right. Solves an awful lot of problems. And he's gonna say that at the end of the chapter. Go back to Rabbi Akiva for one minute. Yes. I know he was one of our great sages and presumably one of our great teachers. But didn't he fail? If he failed to teach these 24,000 students to be respectful to each other, didn't he fail? Yeah, and what he did was after this, he picked himself up again and he taught five students. And from those five students, we we have Judaism today. They, they're the ones that made it work. I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Was something so dramatic necessary to change his course of, and ultimately of Judaism? I, I just... Well, I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble with that sort of line of great teacher, fail, 24,000 students fail, and then things get better. Um, you need to ask another question. You need probably. to ask another question, which is, so so they don't have this degree of cover, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have this degree of cover, but they, they, they're not, they're not, they're great people and they have wisdom and they have what to teach. And, then and they have first man level cover. They have their first man level covered, right? So what what is so bad that they can't? They have to die. You understand? So there's lots of human beings are not perfect. Nothing personal. Some of my best friends are human That's beings, true. but so they don't have perfection. Why is it so necessary to have this? It's because this is exactly how God sees us, or maybe not exactly, but that this is how God wants us to see each other. Otherwise, eventually, like, everything kind of gets diluted and people don't value each other. That, that's absolutely true. But I, I, to round that idea off, I would add that if you don't have this, you don't have Torah. Well, your teaching is not Torah. If you can't see that other people have uh, intrinsic in the mission of what Torah stands for, then what what are you teaching? Your, your Torah is not will not work. You're teaching a corrupted concept. And if it would if it was if it were to survive and stay intact, it would destroy the Jewish people. It was that bad. It's that bad, exactly. Intrinsic. There's a famous uh, fault by the Briska, by the Basel Levi. Phenomenal. It's coming up in the Parsha in Yisrael. So he, he says, uh, he says the Jewish people were asked, were asked, um, were asked, do they want to keep the Torah? The famous phrase that they responded, Na'aseh Nishma, We will do and we will understand. Na'aseh Venishma. So he says, the Torah is MS, the Torah is true. So, so how can it possibly be that that's what they said? They wouldn't have said that. What they would have said is, I say, I will do, and I will understand. The Torah's paraphrasing, you know, so it's like going to a restaurant with a uh, hundred people. You know, who, wa who wants French fries? And everyone raises their hands. So you say to the waiter, we all want French fries. N nobody said, we want French fries. Each person said, I want French fries. You know, but the, the, whoever's ordering will paraphrase it and say, they all said, we want French fries. But the Torah's emits. So the Torah shouldn't have reported it like that. The Torah should have reported it. I will do, and I will understand. How can the Torah report it? We will do. Why does the Torah report it that way if that's not the way it happened? Because it is the way it happened. No, they said, I will. Didn't you no. just say that? No, they, they said, said we will. Saying, they actually did say we will. Uh -huh. I think you're saying uh, one would expect to hear I will, but it says we will. Right, because that's what each one said. Torah is not about you, me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. 
and I'm good and I'm good. Torah is about we're all in this game. We all have to do it. it it's not Torah unless we're all doing it. There's a different Torah when a thousand people are keeping it or 10,000 people are keeping it or everyone's keeping it. It's not the same Torah. You, you live in a community where everyone's keeping Shabbos. It's not the same as living in Oklahoma where you're the only one keeping Shabbos. It's not the same Shabbos. The more people who keep it, the greater the percentage of the Jewish people who are keeping it is a different Torah. The Torah is not meant to be by itself, by one person. Everybody has something to contribute. The way the Almighty stru structured the Torah and the Jewish people is that everybody's necessary. And if you can't see that everybody's necessary, then you, then, then you don't understand Torah. <laughs> you can't transmit it. Did you guys hear, this is, I've, I've been sitting here thinking about this through this whole conversation. Today, there was this huge fight up at 770, the Chabad headquarters. There was a huge fight between a bunch of Jewish Torah scholars up at 770. They tore the place apart. Wow. If, you look, if you look it up, you'll be able to see the pictures. They, they wrecked it. They completely wrecked it. Wow. I mean, the police had to come in and bring in tear gas and threaten to shoot them all, and they started arresting them. I was just, but I'm thinking, obviously, we've got all these, you know, people who theoretically would be very, you know, either taught by the Rebbe or, or inspired by him, and um, they missed something. They seriously must have missed something, or they wouldn't have been fighting each other. But no, I don't know. It's so, you know. Send me the and link. If, if I am sending it to you now, Rabbi. Sarah just was telling me about it. Yeah, but I mean, if that's the, if that's the Jewish people who are supposed to be making the whole world better, we may have to rethink that. So. No, there's no one. There's no one else. There's no. There's no some. There's no uh, second. Uh, second tier. We're there. Okay. Now, so what's the third man? What's the third man? A kamosh bezoyan who devar mitzchches el v'shoyim, just as contempt, how's he trying? A disgrace. Who devar mitzchches is is intrinsic to evil people. K'devar kasus kenu, like the verse we mentioned said, before Russia when an evil person comes, bar gambus, so too. So to contempt or disgrace. There was a Russian evil person walks in the room, right? Contempt comes with him. Ken a covered. So to a covered. So to honor, Mitchikhes and the Siddiqin. So to honor is intrinsic to the Siddiqin. Kia Kavod Shachanth Imezen. Because it, it rests with them and it cannot be separated from them. But Omer, and it's, as the verse says, Eged Zakenav Kavod. Opposite the elders, the elders means Zakin is always a, uh, is a euphemism for wise people. Opposite, against the wise people is honor. They so, use the word, uh, the translation says, before the elders. Before the elders, okay. Right. So, so, so what's, what is he saying? What, what, what is he saying differently here? So he's, he's telling you, you you learn from the evil people. What do evil people do when they when they walk in the room? What's it all about? It's all about them. It's all about them. And how do they behave with other people? They want everybody to give them adulation and respect and, so, right. and et cetera, and love. And they put everyone else down. Mm -hmm. It's all about making everyone feel bad and then looking good. That's what it's all constantly about. So he says, that's the opposite the Siddiquim. By Siddiquim, what do they do? They they distribute covert to other people. How do you how do you give cover to other people really? By by the way you treat them and the way you speak to them and the way you pay attention to them. And they all, what, what, are you, what, what are you saying to them? What's the ultimate coverage you can give to a person? Take their classes. What's that? Take their classes. 
What's the way to give people comfort? Praise them. For what? For the way they act. Okay, that's nice. Be like them. Emulate them. They're very good. You see, what's the most meaningful feeling you, you can have in life? That you're needed. That you're be needed. Right? To be like God. Right? Because what's the intrinsic, ultimate concept of God? That he's needed. He's the most needed thing in the universe. So you make somebody feel that they're needed. How do you make someone feel that they're needed? By figuring out what they give. Why am I echoing? <laughs> By figuring out what's special about them that they can give and making an opportunity for that. Oh, beautiful. Right? How do you make someone feel that? By making them needed. In other words, just like a Russia, an evil person diminishes everyone's value, right? And puts them down in the very, you know, obviously subtle, clever ways, right? They make sure that they dress the best and they, right? Whatever, whatever way they're going to go about doing it. But nevertheless, that's what a Russia does. A Sadik walks into a room, he makes someone feel like, you know, he tries to teach them how to be important and how to make a difference and how to find the meaning in life and fulfill the purpose. All these things make them needed. It gives them comfort, make them feel important. It's not by telling them, oh, you're such a wonder. Don't, I'm not saying it's not part of the process of communication, etc., etc., of getting them to listen to you. But nevertheless, ultimately what you're trying to do is bring, is, is, is show them what their purpose in life is. You do that, you're giving them covered. You're giving them actual cover. They're going to have covered. They're going to feel important because they are. So you're saying like the wicked people, the truly evil people basically prey on others by identifying their weaknesses and bring it out, bringing it out to the fore and truly righteous people identify people with their strengths he thinks is like such a such a tough guy to deal with and so whatever and then he'd meet with them he'd talk with them and he'd be like this guy could be one of my 10 men to change the world what what strength of character he has what this and that like he would see the exact opposite in the positive light exactly very good yeah but it's really it's really you can, that can be applied in so many different places as i was thinking one of the things that That's I was good. always, I used to run these um, very, they would call it a high performing team. It's a very special kind of a team. And one of the reasons that I was really good at it was I was really good at figuring out what people were good at and what they wanted to do. And so when we were putting the team together, that's what I'd always ask them to do. And it really, it worked really well. I, I had no idea what I was doing at the time, but basically, it's pretty much what you're saying. You know, you figure out what special talent or something these people have, and then you have them do that, and they develop it, and they contribute it to the whole group, and it brings up the whole group. That's it. There you go. Way to go, Philly. I actually understood something. <laughs> oh, you do a lot. Sometimes I don't notice, though. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Thank what you. a great way to Thank have. you. Yeah, no, this was <laughs> quite. Yeah, thanks a lot. In many ways. Thank you. So, that about Laila Tov?